What's going on everybody? This is me Alex and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Samsung HMX Q10 full 1080p camcorder. This camcorder is about $200 on Amazon right now and it is capable of recording full 1080p video, 720p as well as 480p standard definition. So without any more further ado, let's go right ahead and get started. This camcorder features a beautiful Schneider Kruschnack lens with CMOS and BSI sensors as well as a 20x digital zoom, Vario Plan HD, and a 10x optical zoom with an f-stop of 1.8 to make sure it delivers very very shallow depth of fields. It has an aperture range of 2.75 to 27.5 and full 1080p video recording capabilities. This camcorder is a wonderful camcorder because it does feature easy one button operation on the back with the zoom in and zoom out buttons. You get a 3.3 inch touchscreen LCD panel on the back which is an LCD AMOLED display. It uses very little battery life and does feature a really really good lens so you can review your videos pretty good. This has amazing audio quality because it uses the Varioplan HD directional microphones on the front of the camera making it much easier to capture and capture your voice. If we take a look quickly right here, I'm demonstrating the built-in lens cap, which I think is a very cool feature. The built-in lens cap allows you to close your lens with one little flip of a button, up for close and down for open, and allows you to close and open your lens cap if you're in a hurry without having to have a removable lens cap. This one protects the lens very much. Inside we have an easy one button operation again, which is the home button. Basically what that does is it allows you to operate the camcorder. You press it once and that takes you to the menu. And then you have a diff three different uh, <coughs> three different things to choose from: auto, manual, and home screen. On here we have the full HD macro mode enabled and OES Duo sensor, which makes our images BSI clear and amazingly good. If we take a look like right here in manual mode, we have the option just to adjust, just like a regular DSLR camera. We have the option to adjust our white balance to daylight, auto, cloudy, fluorescent, tungsten, and then our automatic white balance. Check it out right here. We have the auto white balance as well as our exposure control. We can go all the way up to plus six and negative six. All we do is just adjust it by the plus or minus buttons. Over here we do black light. So if you're recording uh, somewhere where there's light in the back and there's no light in the front, you might want to turn that on. Although if you're recording in daylight, I recommend you leave it off. In focus, we have the mind option to go to manual focus. Now, this is not any focus like the Canon 60D or 70D or 5D Mark III. It's more like the focus of a um, push focus. So it's sort of hard to control sometimes, but I definitely get the shot sometimes. Over here, we have the Super C Night Mode, which allows us to record in nighttime. I see if you turn on the Super, it does improve the quality amazing, but it does significantly enlarge the file size. This does reduce in a 10 and an H.264 file. In art film, we have the option to turn on a fader or off. So when we start the video, it's going to open with a fade. When we close it, it's going to open close with the fade, making our editing things much a little easier. Here we have a cool time lapse recording feature. We have option for 30 seconds, 1 minute, 3 minutes, and 5 minutes. We have the dig digital effect mode, which you have black and white, sepia, negative, a few different things right there, and art mode, uh, which I don't really help me at all. I don't really use them at all, but it is a cool feature. Over here, we have the option to take a still image. As you notice, it does have 4.9 megapixels of the uh, sensor, but it is very, very clear images. All you do is just press the shutter button, and it does snap a picture with a really cool animation. And we have the option here to zoom in and zoom out as well when taking a picture. I will show you guys some more test video and picture towards the end of the video, but for now, let's just go right ahead and just do continue with the review. We press the home button, we have the option to go into settings. In the settings, shooting menu, video resolution menu, we have the option for full 1080p, 60i, HD 720p, 60p, as well as SD standard definition 480p. For the photo resolution, we have two options of 4.9 megapixels, which delivers a resolution of 2466 by 7090, and we have the 1080p by 9, 920p by 1080p uh, photo resolution of 2 megapixels. Here we have the OIS Duo on or off, and as well as the Telemacro on or off uh, little slider here, as well as the digital zoom. So if you do not want to use digital zoom, only optical zoom, you have that option right there. The playback, we have the display right here, which delivers our LCD brightness. We can reduce that and, and increase it to our needs. We have the guideline display, which allows to display a cross, a grid, or a safety zone. I uh, prefer the grid. 
We have the option here for a, a date and time display, a TV display for monitoring to our TV, uh, as well as a few different things. Connectivity, we have the PC software, the USB Connect, as which you can choose from between the mass storage and the PicBird software that comes with this camera. And here we have the file number, time zone, as well as the general settings. Moving on to the side of the camcorder, we have a little speaker, so if you're playing back a video, it's easy to hear the sound, as well as a few different uh, ports here. As uh, If you close them, here's the AV, HDMI mini, as well as the USB micro USB B connector uh, to connect to our USB instead of having to remove the SD card. Uh, this does record to SDHC. The USB does charge, so that is a really good feature. Here's some test video I brought for you guys here. I just have completely handheld outside test footage. Just the camera records amazingly well in outside outdoors. I do not prefer it indoors, however, because this is the camcorder that started out my channel. So if you sort of look at it, it doesn't record well indoors. But if you check it out outside, it does uh, give a nice, cool uh, little. Uh, bright feature here's my dog she's sort of just running away but I really do like the crisp and crisp and clear everything is in focus unlike with the DSLRs like the 5D Mark III it does have continuous focus however it's not that good if we take a closer look here there's a little weird uh, birdhouse I built looks like shit I know um, but if we take a closer look here we're just gonna be taking a look at the flower right there check out that flower it has a nice shallow depth of field if you zoom in from far away it gives it a nice shallow depth of field and really good texture detail up on the flower petals and all that stuff if we zoom out a little bit more we have the option to pause the video pause the recording so we don't have to actually create a new file uh, moving on over here we do have um the little birdie some more flowers here I'm, this is basically a clip of just some flowers and um close-up shots most of the time it's just zoomed in from far away but uh taking a look here we're just going to go ahead and show you guys the zoom i am standing here in the beginning of my deck so i'm just going to show you there uh, i'm standing right over there and if you take a closer look here uh, that's pretty much how far away we're gonna go ahead and zoom in all the way that is a hundred percent optical right there and then uh, the digital zoom right now I switched it off but the digital zoom uh, won't make it to focus however this optical zoom is a little hard to focus depending because you're staying a little too close to the subject that you are filming if we take a closer look here we're gonna be greeted with a few different things such as some more flowers uh, if we really do like this video if you guys uh, like this uh, go ahead and get one. I definitely recommend it. it's a wonderful camcorder for $200. I uh, actually prefer this over the Canon. If you're uh, one of those easy to use or easy to go people that you're in a hurry, you don't want to press a lot of buttons, this is it for you because this is the only camera I can find that does have an easy one button operation. Um, this does feature an amazingly good still image option. If you notice right there, these are some still images I took. The green really pops out on auto mode. These are all on auto mode with the auto brightness. Uh, the image does pop out, however, there is some uh, exposure loss and the detail has uh, really disappeared in the images throughout the video. Again, I did not use a tripod, so this does have image stabilization, but however, it may not be that good. If we take a quick look at it, this one has an amazingly shallow depth of field from zooming in from about 3 feet away from the subject. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you guys like this for more videos like this. Hope to see you guys soon. I will go ahead and uh, bring you guys more videos. In the meantime, see you until next time, guys. Bye.